Hi folks, Brian Strauser, Principal and Chief Executive here at BrightPath. And in this week's edition of BrightPath Live, I'd like to talk to you about National Preparedness Month and the idea of having an emergency kit. In particular, we're gonna take a look at my Get Home Bag, the bag that I keep in my vehicle that helps me make sure that I have the supplies and resources and food uh, and things that I need to get from wherever I might be to my home or another place like my office or elsewhere, a friend's home, where I might have more emergency supplies. Let's take a look at what's in my get home bag. Let's start with uh, some of the basics. Uh, this is a Life Straw water bottle. It actually has an integrated filter in it. So I can take water from a stream or some other source that might be contaminated and then drink it through the filter which will make it into clean water that will be safe for me to drink. Um, particularly helpful with streams and you know, kind of random water fountains. I have a lot of basic supplies like uh, insect spray if I'm going through woods. I have sunscreen, which becomes really important if we're you know, outdoors uh, without shade or things like that. I have um, uh, pepper spray, uh, you know, a basic weapon that's legal in most states, but check your local legality around that. I have an Explorer electric lighter. This actually will start a fire in just about any situation, windy, rainy, or what have you. Um, that way I can use the little stove that I have. Uh, and this is a tiny little cooking stove that only weighs about four ounces. And it actually, it opens up and will take the coffee mug, important item, uh, can sit on top of there, can also be used to boil water. Um, but just something really simple that works in almost any condition. I have a number of little supplies like a beacon. I have a couple pins to write with, including uh, an Athena Health pin. Uh, I have an all-weather writing right in the rain notebook in case I need to take notes uh, somewhere that I might be. I have eating utensils, just a simple knife, fork, and spoon that are aluminum. They don't weigh very much. Um, we have a flashlight, uh, actually two types of flashlights. I have one that I can carry that's a small handheld flashlight, LED light. I also have one that you know, is a, is a forehead light or a, a headlamp rather, I think is the right term, uh, so that if I have to do something in the dark and I need both of my hands, I'm able to use that. I have a couple different knives, a uh, small and a larger one in order to cut things as necessary. I have a tiny little signal mirror that can be used to uh, you know, signal an aircraft or something like that. I have maps, the good old plastic covered Rand McNally maps that I remember from my childhood. I have one of the state of Minnesota, that's where I live, and I have a detailed map of the Twin Cities metro area, Minneapolis and St. Paul, uh, which is the area I am typically in. We talked about the tiny coffee mug earlier that doesn't weigh very much at all. I have two items of shelter. I have a life bivy, which is essentially a super lightweight backpack-like blanket. Uh, if you think about those um, shiny mylar looking emergency blankets, this is quite similar, but it totally surrounds you and has a hood. So it's a much more useful shelter. This is a tarp uh, and I have some paracord string here as well. So I could create a rain shelter if I needed to. Again, really lightweight but tough material. I have a set of uh, multipliers um, so that I've got kind of a basic tool set that I'm carrying around. I have a number of food items. This is a plastic bag made up of instant Starbucks because uh, I have to have my coffee. Uh, but the caffeine can help keep you alert and keep you awake. I also have a number of Gatorade instant packages so I can dump those even into the, the life filter here um, and it will still work and give me extra nutrients and electrolytes. I have a number of um, emergency light sticks or safety light sticks that can be used. I think there's four in this bag that I carry. I have some hygiene items that can be important on a longer return. I have some soap, um, so a small bar of lava soap. I have uh, a couple rolls of camping toilet paper that can be used. I have a, a travel toothbrush and some Crest toothpaste. And I have my unscented deodorant that doesn't cause me allergic reactions. This does weigh a little bit, but these are important items to help kind of keep you sanitary 
if you have to make movements. For electronics, I have this, uh, I have a couple things. I've got a package of batteries for the various lights and things that are here, including the lighter. I also have a solar powered uh, USB battery. So I keep this charge by charging it once a month, but it will charge in the sunlight and then it will store battery power that I can then plug an iPhone or an iPad or another device into to keep that moving. I have a safety vest uh, if I want to be seen. I've got the safety vest that's in safety yellow. I also have a watch cap for a winter cap uh, that's here as well for when it gets cold. And then this is a number of other kind of clothing supplies. I have a parka, a rain parka um, that I can wear if it's raining. Um, there is a folded boonie style waterproof hat here. So this is the hat that has the wide brim that you can wear with a parka or another item. It can help keep the sun off of you. It can also keep the water off of you. I have some gloves here um, that are, they're not necessarily winter gloves, although I will add those as winter uh, gets here, but they're really gloves that are more puncture resistant. So if I have to uh, climb or you know deal with um, cut metal or something like that. I also have a couple different scarves I can wear around my neck or elsewhere to keep the sun off of me uh, or for other purposes um, that might come across. And then lastly of the items uh, here, I have an emergency food ration. Uh, this is basically there's a set of biscuits in here. I don't know probably the best way to describe it. Think of it as like a hard cliff bar. Um, but this is essentially two days of food, about just a little under 4,000 calories. I don't think this would at all be very tasty uh, to have to eat, but it does give me a really small, high calorie source of food and energy to keep me moving in order to get to that place of safety that I'm headed for. And then lastly, all of this is in a backpack. Uh, in particular, this is the uh, 511 30L Covert Backpack. It's just a really nice, nicely made backpack you can purchase from 511 Tactical. Um, two important things to point out with the backpack here. One is I have a first aid kit right here on the side that's you know tucked into this pocket. This has uh, a couple tourniquets um, and then a normal set of kind of emergency supplies. There's enough in here to get me as an individual from point A to point B in most circumstances, even if I was seriously injured, um, I could use the tourniquet or other items in order to stop bleeding, deal with trauma, and get me from point A to point B. The backpack itself also has a hydration bladder, so you can see the, uh, the, the mouthpiece here, but there is about a gallon and a half of water um, integrated into the backpack using, uh, you know, like a camelback reservoir, I think is what it is and then I'm able to drink through this. So between the hydration bladder in the backpack and the life straw filter, I should be good on water as long as I'm, you know, it's not 100 degrees and I'm conserving water and energy uh, as I move along. So that's my get home bag. There's a few other items that are not relevant to this conversation. And again, um, this kit's been tailored to what I see as my profile how far away I will be and the distance I would have to go and the threats that I might encounter, yours might look a little different, but hopefully this gives you some ideas about what would make some great contents for a get home bag.